Them songs work. Amen. They work for my mama. They work for my grandma. They work for my great grandma. They work for Mam Moggy. They work for Mam Moggy. If they work for Mam Moggy, they'll work for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Open your Bibles to uh, Genesis. The 37th division of the book of Genesis. We will pick up this particular pericope right about verse 12. Amen. God is good and all the time. Amen. 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 Then his I'm kidding. Then his brothers went to the pastor. Went to pastor. Some of y'all didn't get that joke. Y'all ain't been in church long enough. Then his brothers. Okay. Then his brothers went to pasture their flock, their father's flock in Shechem. Somebody say Shechem. Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pastoring the flock in Shechem? Come and I will send you to them. And he said to them, I will go. Somebody say, I will go. You're not qualified to be a Joseph unless you have a I will go in your spirit. I know, I know, I know. You're not qualified to be a Joseph. You're not qualified for palace living until you have a I will go in your spirit. If you have a I will stay in your spirit, then you will stay in your circumstance. You'll stay in your situation. You'll stay where you are. You'll stay in your financial situation. But if, if, if you have a I will go in your spirit, then you know that God is leading you to a new place. Somebody say a new place. Then he said to them, now, now, then he said to him, now go, go now and see about the welfare of your brothers. I'm reading from the New American Standard Version. This is uh, uh, Genesis 37. This is Genesis 37. Okay. Um, uh, where was I? Then he said to them, go and see about the welfare of your brothers and the welfare of the flock and bring the word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron and he came to Shechem. A man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And a man asked him, what are you looking for? Look at your neighbor and say, what are you looking for? And he said, I'm looking for my brothers. Please tell me where they are pastoring the flock. Then the man said, they have moved from here. Lord, have mercy. I wish I could just deal with all this right here. What are you looking for? You might be looking in the wrong place. What are you looking for? You might be looking in the wrong place. See, 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 this is why we call it God chasers, because God is never standing still. He's always moving to a new place. And what you have to do is you have to follow the deliverance. Lord, have mercy. The Bible says, <laughs> the Bible says, behold, I am about to do a new thing. Shall you not perceive it? Perception has to do with your sense of smell. So if you follow your nose, because it always knows. Some of y'all not old enough to get that right there. You follow your nose because it always knows to where God is. Oftentimes we want to go where God was because we remember what the blessing was, where God was. But God said, if I move to a new place, then I shifted the blessing. Oh, I shifted the blessing. Look at somebody and say shift. No, you didn't say a lot of that. You look at them and yell out shift because where you thought it was, it's not there anymore. He said, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Here's the good part. Thank you, Jesus. I know y'all want to sit down. I'm going to let you sit down. Here's the good part. When they saw him from a distance and before he came close to them, they plotted against him to put him to death. They said to one another, here comes the dreamer. Listen, it's a very Christian thing to, to call you something good in a bad way. Oh, only Christians have that skill. You know, I never, Pastor Kev, I never realized until I became a pastor that people could use my actual first name to disrespect me. People be like, hey, Dante. <laughs> See, what you don't understand, Dante, you know that is my name. 
but it sounded disrespectful the way you said it. Okay, maybe that's just me. Maybe you know, maybe you never. Here comes that dreamer. Well, that's that. Yeah, that's me. But you, the way you said, <laughs> that's true about me. But the way you said, okay, all right. <laughs> Now then, come let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. I love that the, uh, the King James Version says the cistern. Somebody say the cistern. And we will say a wild beast devoured him. Lord, I wish I could deal with that. Then let us see what will become of his dreams. Dante. But Reuben heard this and rescued him. Out, Reuben heard this and rescued him out of their hands, saying, "Let us not take his life." Reuben further said to them, "Shed no blood. Throw him into the cistern that is in the wilderness. Throw him into the pit that is in the wilderness. But do not lay hands on him. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm." That he may rescue him out of his out of their hands to restore him to his father. So it came about when Joseph reached his brothers, they stripped him of his coat. I told you they hate you because of your coat. They stripped him of his coat, the very colored tunic that was on him, and they took him and they threw him into the pit. And the pit was empty and without any water in it. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We give you the glory and honor. Lord, help me help them in Jesus' name. I pray amen and amen. High five three people and say, he'll save you in the cistern. In the cistern. You can have your seat. Salvation in the cistern. Salvation in the cistern. So I, I want to talk today, and I, 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 I sort of made this, this, this disclaimer. I want to talk today to some people who are stuck. Somebody say stuck. But I, I want to talk today to the people who are stuck. Now, uh, before I get really deep into this, I, I also want to remind you guys that right after service today, man, we're going to have a concert. It's going to be awesome, man. My man Brian's going to be here. He's going to be singing. It's just going to be gonna be something somebody somebody says it's gonna be something so so maybe stick around stick around I'm telling you it's gonna bless your life okay okay now I want to talk to some people today who are stuck somebody say stuck the story of Joseph teaches us this it teaches us that you can be stuck in one season of your life but be a savior in another season of your life you can be stuck in one season of your life and you got to be careful. That's why I'm really careful with labels. I'm really careful with labels. Some people say, and I, you know, and I'm not against anybody. Whatever works for you, works for you. But people say, oh yeah, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. No, no, no. I'm an ex-alcoholic. I used to be an alcoholic. See, y'all didn't know that y'all were superheroes, right? Every one of y'all is X-Men. You used to be something. Now you're something else. This is the value of Christianity. I'm an X-Man. I used to be, you thought you were, you thought, you, you thought you were Wolverine. I'm an X-Man. I used to be one thing. Now I'm something else. I used to be a liar. I don't lie no more. I used to be a cheater. I don't cheat no more. I used to be an alcoholic. I, I, I'll keep going until I get to yours. I used to be an alcoholic. I don't drink no more. I used to be a smoker. I don't smoke no more. I used to cuss. I don't do it as much. My ex. My ex. X, right? Okay, so so you got to get into a place where you know that 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 where you are is not where you will always. I could share my laptop. I just helped you right there. Where you are is not where you will always be. So you you you, you shouldn't focus so much on where you are. Some of y'all can go back to high school, go back to where you were, how you worried about rather he, rather he liked you or rather she liked you or rather this was that. Now you look at them now, you'll be like, Lord, I'm so glad that I <laughs> swerved. What they say? Swerved. I'm so glad I swerved. That... Skirt. I'm so glad I swerved that relationship <laughs> because, because the truth is things that you worry about today are, 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 are not necessarily as important as you go on through your life. Does that make sense? Can we agree with that? 
Can y'all agree with that? So you can be stuck in one season of your life but be a savior in another season of your life. Oftentimes, the people, uh, uh, let me read this right. Oftentimes, the people you enjoy the most have suffered in ways that you can't imagine. The people who are the most uh, uh, blessed to you, you don't realize that in one season of their life, they were stuck. In one season of their life, they went through something. That's why it's so powerful. It's so important that you testify about where you've been and what you've been. That's why we can't afford to go to a church where everybody dress up their mess. Dress up their cologne. Oh, you know, you spray over it and you dress it up and you learn how to speak this, this, this language. But the truth is, you just as messed up as... A... And if you're not now, you once was... Are y'all with me? Y'all don't want to testify about it. Okay, y'all cute. Okay, y'all cute. Okay, so 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 you got to realize that 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 people who you think are doing well have gone through something. People who you think are blessed have gone through something. They have gone through something, and you and, and oftentimes you want their prize without their pain, but you can't have their prize. You can't have their prize if you haven't got their pain. It's some people who, who are doing well next to you, but they suffered to do it. And if, and if you haven't suffered long enough or you haven't suffered like they've suffered, and then you wonder why you haven't gotten to where you want to be, it's, it's going to take some bumps and some bruises. It's going to take some pain. It's going to take for me to go through something so I can get where I'm supposed to be. One of the problems with... with, with uh, I'm getting in trouble here. One of the problems with being young is that you don't have the experience enough to know what you don't know. It's not that, it's not that you're not smart. You could be very smart and very intelligent, but you haven't learned enough to know what you don't know. You can know everything about what you do know and absolutely nothing about what you don't know. And sometimes only life can teach. Oh, man. Sometimes you got to have an experience where God will teach you what, what you didn't know. But it is the lessons that I, I'm just introducing this now. I ain't even got to my first point yet. But it is the lessons that you learn while you're growing. It's the lessons that you learn while you're going through that, that prepare you for what you're going to. Okay, so I learned what I was going through and it prepared me for what I was going to. I learned while I was going through and it prepared me for what I was going to. What I learned in this season prepared me for better. Okay, so what you're going through in this season might not look like, feel like better, but it's preparing you. Are, are y'all with me? Okay, so, so, so Joseph is um, on an assignment from his father. Listen, listen, listen. The blessing of the Lord follows the obedience of the Lord. If you want to see God's blessing in your life, it, it comes after instruction and obedience. Oftentimes you keep saying, oh God, why you ain't said nothing? Because you didn't do the last thing I said. And I ain't into repeating myself. Why you, why you ain't said nothing? Because I told you to break up with him. I mean, uh, I told you to do... You keep trying to beg me to make it right. I keep trying to tell you he's Mr. Wrong. So, so Joseph is following the instructions. I, I just feel like helping somebody today, man. I just want to help somebody. Okay, so, so Joseph is following the instruction of his father. And he goes to look for his brothers. And all of a sudden, his brothers see him before he sees them. Oh, that's a side note. They see you. Yeah, they see you. Here's a sign. They see you. You don't got to make a lot of noise. You don't got to be too old, oh, boo-boo. You can put all your clothes back on. You don't got to take a picture. They see you. They see you. The Bible said that his brothers saw him before he saw them. They said, here come this dreamer. Here come this dreamer. They said, oh, that's so wrong. That's so sarcastic. Here come this dreamer. They said, okay, we're going to put him in the pit. This is where I want to go today. This is, this is where I want to go today. I want to go to this, just this little piece of scripture, this, this little Pastor Ravon. Sometimes the Bible is about what it doesn't say. 
See, you have to, you have, to have the revelatory ability to uh, assume scripturally what it does not say. The Bible says they take this man and they throw him into a pit. Lord have mercy. They throw him into a pit. Now, let me describe this pit for you. It could have been anywhere from 10 to 30 feet. What they would do is they would dig a hole, right? They would dig a hole. They would dig a hole and they would, uh, they would put cement down into the hole. Lord have mercy. And what they would do is they would pour clean water into that whole uh, water that they had filtered or, 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 or cooked or whatever. They would pour it into that hole and that would be their water well where you could get clean water. Are y'all with me? They call this thing a cistern. Uh, in the Bible, they call it a pit because this particular cistern was empty. The Bible says there was no water in it. Somebody said no water in it. Uh, the first thing that I noticed with this particular text is, do you realize how quickly people who needed you in one season will dispose of you in another season? Maybe that's just me. People will lead you in one season, but they will, they, they quit to dispose of you in another. They said, let's just dispose of this young man. And, and the truth is, oh Lord Jesus, the truth is, they'll make you feel like you are disposable. They didn't let you in the clique. They didn't let you in the gang. You didn't make it into the, into the situation. They didn't let you dance on the dance team. They didn't let you sing in the choir. And all of a sudden, you feel disposable. But I want you to know something that we serve a God who runs a recycling plant. He says, I take the, oh, Jesus, I take the disposable thing. I take the old thing. In fact, he said, I'll trade you. If you give me ashes, I'll give you beauty. If, he give you, if you give me pain, I'll give you joy. I'll trade you. Whatever it is. And if you feel disposable today, I dare you to make the beautiful exchange. Trade in your pain for joy. Trade in your ashes for beauty. And watch what God... Y'all not with me today. Okay. So, 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 so I love this. Uh, when, when, they, when they disposed of you, they didn't realize what they were doing. See, see... When they dispose of you, when you put me in a box, you force me to be creative. When you put me in a box, you force me. You, you made me realize how smart I was. You made me realize how strong I was. You made, it was you. Thank you, baby. Thank you, boo-boo. You made me realize how valuable I was to me. Sometimes you got to be thrown in a pit to realize how valuable how good, how smart, how intelligent you are, that you know how to maneuver. Oh, Jesus. I didn't know I, I didn't know I knew how to break dance till I got stuck in some stuff. Then I get <laughs> I knew you were like that. I knew you were like that. I didn't know until I got stuck in some stuff and I had to maneuver. I had to get my way out of it. And God, what God is doing oftentimes is he'll let people put you in a place so, not so that he can learn who you are and not so that they can learn who you are so that you can learn. I love this. They threw him into a sister. It could be anywhere from 10 to 30 feet. 10 to 30 feet deep and they threw him down in there now now uh, you, you know there's no way this might not be a surprise to you but there's no way to go through life and get thrown down and avoid bruises in fact you know you know have y'all ever you know been around people who work out a lot they make me sick but anyway they are uh, <laughs> You know, people who work out a lot, they, they always want to show you their bruises. Have you ever noticed that? They'd be like, yeah, this is, this is one time when the barbell fell on my arm. And I was doing some squats right here. And this is thing right here. And I got this, this bruise right here. And I'd be like, so. <laughs> but the truth is, there's value, there's beauty in bruises. Somebody say there's beauty in bruises. There's beauty in bruises. See, I need you to understand them. First thing I need you to understand is you're going to be bruised. You're going to get bruised. But when you understand something, that, that God is using those bruises to make you better. Oh, Jesus. Uh, 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 
See, oftentimes it is the bruising itself that makes you better. A bruise is simply a mark to remind you that in some time and some season there was a pain, but there was also a collection of blood. Y'all got me working hard today. There was also a collection of blood. You see, when you had a pain, when you had a pain, all of a sudden the blood rushed to where your pain was. The blood rushed. The blood rushed. And I just need you to take about 30 seconds. Think back over your life to some times where you got a pain and the blood showed up. Oh, Jesus. And the blood showed up. I had a pain in my relationship. I had a pain at my job. I had a pain with my children. But the blood showed up. And the bruise is simply an identifier of a season or a time where the blood showed up. Oftentimes, oftentimes that's why it's red or, or purple. It's because the blood rushed to that place. The blood rushed to that place. And I feel the blood rushing to your situation right now. Some of y'all are in the cistern. Some of y'all are stuck in some places, but the blood is about to rush. Listen, you're about to get dizzy. You're going to have to sit down because the blood is about to rush to your situation. God said, I'm about to move on your behalf. I'm about to move on your behalf. The blood rushes in. So now my bruises become my badges. Now my bruises. So that's why I love Revelation 12, 11, Because it said we overcome by the blood of the lamb. And the word of our testimony. So I can sit down next to you. I can sit down next to you DB. And I can say. Well I remember when I was going through what you going through. But the blood rushed to the. Uh, I remember I was enduring what you were enduring. But the blood rushed to right here. And I can show you my bruises. And the problem with us Christians is that we like to hide our bruises. But if I don't show you my bruises. Then you won't know that you could overcome like I overcame. If you're looking for a perfect church, you picked the wrong one. Find another one. Because there's nobody perfect in here. Everybody in here has bruises. But more bruises, more badges. <laughs> more bruises, more badges. Some of us are generals in life because we got all these badges. I'm a general in life. You need to talk to me, baby. I done fought some battles. I got the scars to be. The enemy thought he hurt you. He didn't hurt you. He just, he just identified a place where the blood needed to get to. He just identified a place in your life where the blood needed to show up. Listen, if you're not ready for bruises, you're not qualified for better. If you're not ready for bruises, you're not qualified. No one who has better has complained about the bruises. Each and every person who's in better can show you points in their life where they thought they were defeated, where they thought it was over, where they thought the towel got thrown in, but God swept in, God showed up, and I'm telling you right now, in some of y'all life, God is about to show up. If you believe it, stand up and give God about 30 seconds of crazy praise. JJ, I need you back over here. We going to work today. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The blood rushed in. The blood rushed in. The blood rushed in. Sit down. Y'all making me nervous. The blood rushed in. So David said it like this. He said, it was good that I was afflicted. Oh, man. I, it was good that I was afflicted. It was good that I... Sometimes I don't want to tell y'all this stuff because I'm afraid y'all do it. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to inbox them and say, it was good that I was a flute. <laughs> what you did to me, it didn't hurt me, it helped me. <laughs> but you... I'm telling y'all, I ain't preaching some hater stuff. I'm telling you what the Bible said. It said I, it was good that I was afflicted because I learned your decrees. Now, we say your decrees. And, and a lot of times that sounds real scriptural and real, and real smart. And you say, because I learned your decrees. And it sounds wonderful when you say it like that. But what is that? He's saying, I learned your prescription. 
I learned the, the alliteration, the transliteration of that word. Is, I, I learned your prescription. That means I, I learned the medicine. Oh. When you hurt me, it was medicine. When you did that to me, when you lied on me, when you talked about me behind my back, it was medicine for me. It was medicine for me. And God used it. He used it. To, he used it the, the same way the doctor used medicine. He used it to make me better. He used it to make me better. So it was good that I was afflicted so I could learn God's prescription. You see, it wasn't a loss. It was a lesson. They said last night I took an L. But my L wasn't a loss. It was a lesson. It's what I learned yesterday that gives me the courage to be who I'm supposed to be tomorrow. So I thank you for what you told me yesterday because it put me in the right. Oh, y'all don't want to have church this morning. You didn't hurt me, you taught me. It was a different, it wasn't a, it wasn't a loss. It was a lesson. Look at somebody say, I took an L. But it was a lesson. It wasn't a loss, it was a lesson. And I'm better for it. When you threw me in the pit, you didn't realize that the pit is a place of preparation. The pit is a place of preparation. I, 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 this might be too practical for God chasing, but I'm going to say it anyway. Some of y'all going to go home today. You're going to take some food that's not ready. And you're going to put it on the pit. The pit, the pit is a place of preparation. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Now, when you are immature, the pit is a dangerous place for you. If you have a baby or a child, you don't want to let him play around in the pit. That's a dangerous place for an immature person. But for a mature person, it is a place of preparation and if you really mature you can make something beautiful you can make something beautiful if you really mature fire doesn't kill you it makes you better if you really mature you can get down into the fire and become better somebody say better so God, so God used the pit to prepare me for the pallet. Oh man. All right, all right, all right, all right. Get this. Lord have mercy. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to finish this. Oh, Pastor Mo is. Oh, time to finish this. All right, are y'all with me? Yeah. So, 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 so it was good that I was afflicted. Say that again. It was good that I was afflicted. I was a little immature. Yeah. I was a little arrogant. Yeah, when I got with you, yeah, I was a little, yeah. And so it was good that you did what you did because it taught me and now it matured me. And now I'm better for it. Now I'm a better mom to my kids. Now I'm a better father to my children. Now I'm a better person. Now I'm a better individual because of what happened with you. God didn't, God didn't kill me in the pit. He pruned me in the pit. Are y'all with me? One more note for the pit people. I need you to understand something. When you're stuck in something. For the people who tried to bury you. If you were dead. I just need. Maybe I'll talk over here for a second. If you were dead. If you were deceased. You would disintegrate. When you got buried. But if you are alive. You don't die when you get buried. You grow when you, oh man. You don't bury seeds, you plant them. I'm a seed. I'm a seed. When you put dirt on me, you didn't bury me, you planted me. Now all of a sudden, I'm gonna start stretching out. I'm gonna be stretching out all of In fact, I need one or two crazy Christians just to stretch out all over this building, just to take a step, stretch out all over this place. You didn't bury me. You didn't bury me, you stretch me. You didn't bury me, you stretch. I didn't even know I could grow like this. 
I didn't even know I could grow like that. I learned a lesson. I learned a lesson. See, when they tried to bury you, when they tried to bury you, they put you in the perfect place for your maturity. You didn't know? When you put me under that dirt, when you threw that dirt on me, and you threw that dirt, you didn't know you were fertilizing my dream. You didn't know you were fertilizing my future. You didn't know you were preparing me for where I so 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 as I mature as I mature I realize that even though I'm stuck in the cistern God still can save me in the cistern even though I'm stuck hear me right here even though I'm stuck in the cistern God can save me right in the place where I'm stuck See, you got to have some theological understanding of this. I told you earlier, it, it is where the Bible is silent. That you got to you gotta really dig right there. So, so the, the brothers threw him down in a pit. They tore his coat up. Boy, they hate that coat, boy. His dad shouldn't have never gave him no coat. They shouldn't have never gave you. Okay. <laughs> his dad gave him a coat. They tore up the coat. They threw him down in the pit. But look. The Bible says that they sat down and they ate a meal. Right there with him in the pit. Boy, that's cold-blooded, boy. That's cold-blooded. They sat down they ate a meal right there. And they decided what they were going to do with him. While, while, while he sat and soaked in the pit. They decided how they were going to treat him. They had pr private conversations, private DMs. <laughs> Plotting. See, people, people are actively... Uh, not every... No, wait, wait, wait. Not everybody. Because not everybody have a future they pointed to us. Not everybody has a purpose that they're pointed towards. Everybody have a purpose. Some of y'all just not pointed towards it. And you think you have haters, but really people not paying you no attention. But there's some people that's pointed towards purpose. That the enemy has aligned your enemies against you. I'm here to help you with that. I'm here to help you with that. The Bible said they sat down and they ate a meal. Now, we have some theological understanding here that there was at least one hour. Because this is the ceremonial meal time. We still use that time now. But it was at least one hour in Hebrew time. It was at least one hour that they would sit down and eat this meal. But it could have been up to days. Because the Bible said that afar off, they saw camels coming. They saw slavers coming. And they said, now let's just sell our brother to the slave we don't want his blood on my hand on our hands so we're gonna sell him boy i could work that boy they mm, they don't have the courage to do it to you themselves so they instigate okay okay all right i know this this service gonna get me in trouble but it's okay i gotta help the people i'm trying to help so they saw them afar off now we have some theological understanding that it could have possibly been up to two days that he sat in the cistern. It could have been anywhere from one hour to two days. Soaking. Sitting. In a dark place. No light. Fell down 10 to 30 feet. Fell down. Bruises. Bruised. Maybe he had broken arms and legs. That's why, I, that's why I hug and love on everybody who comes in this church. Because some people come in this church with broken arms and legs and, 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 and bruises and situations that you don't even know that they've been through. I love on every single person that comes here. I don't care what color your skin is, what color your hair is, how much money you got in the bank. We love on every single person who comes in here. You don't know what they've been through. I don't know where they're broken the people came into the, the the camels were coming closer and the bible said this whole time joseph didn't say anything there were no words from him there were no yells there were no screams there were no crying <laughs> The 
don't do them the courtesy. Don't do them the courtesy of complaining. What are you complaining for? Don't do them the courtesy of complaining. God is for you. Stop trying. Raise up your staff, Moses. Okay. The Bible says that he sat silent. The first thing that I want to tell you, I got five points. <laughs> the first thing that I want to tell you, this is, this is lessons I learned in the cistern. Lessons I learned in the cistern. The, the first thing I want to tell you is that you got to be silent in the cistern. You got to be silent in the cistern. You learn silence in the cistern. See, we, we at church, we do this thing, man, and I love it, and everybody's great, and they have all these noises, and Hammond B3s, and drums, and guitars, and, and, and the truth is, we've got so comfortable with it that we're uncomfortable without it. But when you in your pit, JJ not there. JJ got a gig. When you in your pit, Ronnie not singing you through it. You got to sing yourself through it. But when you're in that pit, you, can, you, you, you got to learn silence. 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 In the sister. See, I learned, I learned in the silence, Mario, I learned that God doesn't yell. He whispers. The Bible says that it, it, I thought it was in the lightning, but it wasn't in the lightning. And I thought it was in the thunder, but it wasn't in the thunder. I thought it was in the mountain, but it wasn't in the mountain. And finally, a still, small voice. Zephaniah 3. Chapter 3, verse 17. I think it's verse 17. He says this. He says this. Yeah, 317. He says, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, your God is in your midst. He is mighty to save. He is mighty to deliver. He will sing over you with blessing. He will quiet you with his love. He will quiet you with his love. Don't, you don't have to complain. You don't have to argue back. You don't have to make an argument for yourself. He'll quiet you with his love. His love is surrounding me. One of my favorite songs they sung it today. It's the craziest song I ever heard in my life. It says, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. And the first time I heard it, I was like, okay. <laughs> Listening. It never says it. Because how you fight your battles is not about what you say. It's about what you do when it's happening to you. When you're in a battle, you don't fight. You don't fight with this and you don't fight with these you fight like this this is how i fight my battle the bible says send judah first so i fight my battles with a praise and i fight my battles with a worship and i don't have to argue about you because really this situation you might have put me in but it's not about you it's about us and whatever he wants to do to me through me in this situation i was In silence. I learned silence in the cistern. In the cistern. My grandma used to say it like this. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, victory, victory. This is how I fight. Number two. Y'all ready for this? I learned not to sour in the cistern. See, this is a difficult part. I can be silent, but I ain't that good with not souring. You see, I, I, I get bitter. I get vindictive. I want to get somebody back. 
and while you put me in the, the, the truth is that I, I was thinking about the silent point and I was thinking about my family I, got, I come from a family of fighters if they get real quiet on you you better be careful if somebody ever if I, if I went over to my sister and punched her in the arm and I didn't hear from her for two or three minutes But, 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 but a mature Christian learns not to sour. They learn not to sour in the cistern. Because if you sour in the cistern, you disqualify yourself. If you sour in the pit, you disqualify yourself from palace living. If you sell, if you're going to be vindictive, if you always got to get something back, because the truth is this, God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. And if you do it, if you get them back, you stole from God. You are a thief and a robber because you won't let it go. You got to learn how to let stuff go. I'm not going to sour. You see, the Bible says this. Oh, Jesus. Let me give y'all this scripture. The Bible says this. Hebrews 12, 15. Like prego? Okay. Hebrews 12, 15 says this. It says the root of bitterness. Be careful that the root of bitterness don't spring up inside you and contaminate the tree. See, 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 see. There is a tree. Remember, you are a seed. There is a tree coming out of your pain. I told y'all this last week. The difference between Christians and non-Christians. Really simple, right? Right? We both go through pain. But mine is for a purpose. And yours is for nothing. Right? My pain is not in vain. Right? Romans 8, 28 says, All things are working out for my good. You just went through it. I went through it for purpose. Are y'all with me? But if I let my seed get contaminated, then I contaminate the whole tree, therefore contaminating the fruit that I could get from this. I'm teaching better than y'all shouting today. If, if, I can if I let the root of bitterness take hold, bitterness contaminates blessings. Say that. So I don't, I'm not going to contaminate my blessing trying to get you back. I don't have no time for that. I'm not going to contaminate my blessing trying to sow something in. I, no, I don't have time for that. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm not going to let... I got, I got blessing on the other side of this. Okay, are y'all with me? I'm, I'm going to go to this next one uh, real quick. There's safety in the cistern. Some of y'all are worried about the wells. <laughs> Some of y'all are worried about the well, W-H-A-L-E. Okay, you're worried about the whales. The whales don't have any power to kill you. Their teeth are too small to bite you. And their stomach is too small to digest you. So all they can do is hold you in their big old mouth. All they can do is keep you in their big old mouth until they get you to the place where God wanted you in the first place. And then they got to spit you out. Oh, read the book of Jonah if you don't know what I'm talking about. The Bible says that. The Bible says, see, you are afraid of the whale. But the truth is the whale saved you from the sharks. The sharks would have killed you. The whale just transported you. Stop ascribing power to people who are powerless in your life. Stop ascribing power. The biggest ones, the least power. You ascribing all the power. You worried about the wrong thing. Really, it's the ones that can sneak up. Oh. There's safety in the cistern. See, I, 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 I could have died. I could have died. I might be bruised. I might be battered. I might be scorned. But I'm not dead. Lord have mercy. I might be bruised. I might be hurt. But I'm not Elliot. I need you to hear me. I'm not, I may be bruised. I may be battered. But I'm not dead. And as long as I'm alive, it ain't over till it's good. If it ain't over, God's still working on me. If it ain't over, God's still fixing it. 
there's safety in the cistern. This is another one. I, I just wrote, I just pushed this in. I don't know if this will help you, but you can, you learn to sing in the cistern. I don't know this, you know, but I can just imagine that the acoustics are good. I don't know this for sure, but I could just imagine the acoustic. The Bible says that when a cistern, they would cement out the walls. So you're in a you're in a fully cemented space. I don't know this for sure, but it's almost like being in the shower. You just sound better. You automatic. You vocally promote it when you get in the shower. You are automatically promote it. If you on the praise team, you promote it to leader. If you in the congregation, you promote it to the praise team. If you way in the back, you promote it to just good enough to. You start seeing. This is how I find my back. This is how I find my. Back. This is how I find This is how I wait, 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 wait. This is how I find my back. Imagine. And my brothers are up there. They threw me down here. But they can hear me up there. Let me help you right here. This might be. I'd be too real for the live stream. This is how I fight. Don't say nothing back to him. Don't argue with him. Don't go back and forth. Live your best life. This is how I feel. Ooh, whoa. Let the head out of it. Yeah. This is how. Wait, 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 okay. The cistern is, is deep, but it's not wide because they didn't have digging tools. So, so when you got in there, it would have been a tight space. Kev, it may look like I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, surrounded by you. This is how I find my back. Jesus, please forgive my brothers. They know not what they did to me. And the truth is. It only worked to make me strong. It may look like. All right. All right. Listen. If you can sing in the sister, then you can do this next point. You can survive the sister. See, sometimes it's not about your fight. It's just about your endurance. Muhammad Ali. He said, I don't have to beat Big George. I just have to endure. I have to out endure him sometimes it's not about your fight you don't have the skills you don't have the strength you don't have the power to beat it what you have to do is endure it and if you survive it the bible makes you a promise it says weeping may endure for a night 
but joy. Listen, listen. It doesn't matter how long I'm down in this thing. If I can endure it. If I can endure it. Joy is coming. Somebody say joy is coming. Joy is coming. Joy is coming. I don't have to beat you. I just have to endure. Joy is coming in the morning. So I, so I don't have to outfight it. I just got to outlast it. Some of y'all, whatever you're going through, you don't have to outfight it. You just got to outlast it. If you can just stay in the fight, if you can just stay in it, don't quit, don't give up. And a part of the, oh Jesus, the problem with most of us is that we just quit. We quit too soon. You take a couple hits and you quit. But God said, if you can just endure, joy is coming. Joy is coming. Joy is coming. Margo, if I can survive this, then I can be saved in the cistern. I may not be saved from the cistern. The problem with Christians is that we always want to be saved from the cistern. We don't want to be saved in the cistern. But God said this, oh Jesus. Meshach, Shadrach. Hmm. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. A bad Negro. Okay. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego are three Bible characters. We talked about this last week. Three Bible characters. They're really famous. They're famous for one word. Nevertheless. The king said, bow. They said, no, no, we're not going to bow. The king even said this. He said, do you think your God will deliver you from this? You think your God going to help you? Here we go. You think your God going to do this? You think your God going to pay your bill? You think your God going to work it out? You think your God going to fix your kids? Meshach, Shadrach. I love that they didn't say who said it. They said it like they said it in chorus. The Bible said they said. They said. My God has the power to deliver me from your fire. But nevertheless, if he does not, I will not bow. If he don't deliver me from it, then he'll give me the power to endure it. The Bible says that they turned the fire up seven times hotter. I feel like I just told this story. I'll tell it again. They turned the fire up seven times hotter. They tried to put Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Uh, that was Bible study. Okay, good. Then y'all, I wonder why y'all looking at me crazy. Okay. They turned the fire up seven times hotter. Hey, Brian. They turned the fire up seven times hotter. They turned the fire up so, so hot. That the guards who were assigned to put them in the fire. Boy, y'all need to hear me right here. The guards who were assigned to put them in the fire. Burnt up trying to put them. Tell me my God ain't bad. You gonna mess around and get burnt. Messing. That's, the, that's the tweet of the day right here. Mess around and get burnt. Messing with me. The Bible said the guards who were assigned to put them in the fire, put them into, pushed them into the fire, but they were burnt up. Now, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego go into the fire. Nebuchadnezzar is, is, is standing there looking into the fire. He says, yo, <laughs> then we throw Meshach, Shadrach, and a bad negro into the fire God said yeah yeah man that's Meshach Shadrach and a bad negro he says well what if it's three of them why is it four people in the fire 
Y'all need to read. It's in the book of Daniel. Y'all better go read that, man. It's a, like Prego is in there. Why are there four people in the fire? Now, let me help you with this right here. Jesus would not be born for 2,500 years. But King Nebuchadnezzar said, and one of them looked like the Son of God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. God will make your enemies see the Jesus that's walking with you. Even when they don't know who Jesus is. They don't know who Jesus is. He looked in that fire and said, one of them looked like the son of God. He didn't deliver them from the fire. Pastor Paul, he got into the fire. You think you by yourself? It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. The Bible said, because of the joy set before him, he considered it. He con he thought about you. He considered it, and he stepped down from glory, wrapped himself in flesh, and said, just because they got to go through it, I'm going to go through it with them. If they got to be crucified, I'm going to be crucified. If they got to get on the cross, I'm going to get on them. Let me help you right here. Jesus didn't come to deliver you from the cross. He came to get up there with you. He came to get up. And he said, if I'm strong enough to do it, and it is me working in you, hear me right here he said it is me working in you he said me inside of you is the hope of glory yes, sir. Yes, sir. he didn't come to deliver you from your trouble he didn't come to do that's why you got to be saved in trouble he didn't come to deliver you from it <laughs> he said i'm with you in it i'm with you in it I'm with, oh, thank you, Gabe. Oh, that's a minister right there. He said, yay. Though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. You may be hurting. You may be bruised. You may be broken. You may be disposed of. But you are not alone. He said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. But listen, you are not alone. You can have salvation in the cistern. One more quick revelation. I'll let you, I'll let you go here. So... The Bible says that his brothers saw camels. <laughs> his brothers saw camels. He said, they said, that here comes some slavers. Let me sell him to the slavers. I don't think his brothers understood something that happened to their grandfather. But Abraham saw a prophetic dream that there was camels coming. Abraham saw a prophetic dream that camels were coming. See, camels are a sign of salvation. When you see camels coming, there, 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 is, there is a salvation that's coming in your direction. And Abraham saw the sign of camels coming. He saw the sign of salvation. And all of a sudden, the brothers also saw camels coming. The Bible said that they had myrrh and frankincense. Myrrh and frankincense. Myrrh and frankincense. I started thinking about this. Why did it matter that they had silver and gold and myrrh and frankincense? Because the next time we'd see camels coming with silver silver and gold and myrrh and frankincense they would be coming to see the baby Jesus be born what I'm telling you now is what feels like slavery now and what feels like a pit now is actually deliverance to your salvation God is about to bring camels to your 
your life. God is about to bring camels to your life. And if you just learn how to be saved in the pit, you qualify for the palace. The camels are coming. 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 You can cry about the pit all you want, but you got to understand that the camels are coming. God didn't speak for 400 years. <laughs> the first time he spoke again, camels start moving. <laughs> God didn't say anything for 400 years. The next time he spoke again, he spoke to three wise men. They got on three camels. They packed myrrh and frankincense. What does this have to do with Joseph? What I'm telling you is what feels like a pit, what feels like a setback is a setup for your comeback what feels like a setback is a setup for your comeback father in the name of jesus lord we thank you god we give you glory and honor lord i thank you for these people under the sound of my voice i thank you for what you've done and through them today lord jesus i believe that they are qualified thank you lord jesus for palace living because of what they endured in one season lord jesus i pray you give them strength over strength god I pray you give them strength over strength. I pray you give them strength over strength, God. Lead them and guide them. But let them know that you are with him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I would that you would repeat this prayer after me. We're going to say one prayer one time, but I believe that if you say that prayer, God will come into your life. He will change your life. And what you used to be, you don't have to be any longer. What you used to endure, you don't have to endure any longer. What you used to go through, you don't have to go through it any longer. Because God is with you. It's real simple. We call it the ABCs. Accept, believe, and confess. Once you accept Jesus into your heart, you believe that he lives in you, that he is God, and then you confess him to others. We believe that God will come in your heart and dwell, and you will escape hell and be promised heaven. If that's you today, I want, to, I want you to say this prayer after me. We're all going to say it together so nobody feels alone. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins come into my heart change my heart come into my mind change my mind father i accept you as my lord and savior i accept your salvation i accept your salvation i accept your truth in jesus name i pray amen and amen listen if you said that prayer for the first time or you believed it for the first time when i count to three i want you to take one more step of faith and raise your hand as high as you can raise it one two three raise your hand as high as you can raise it somebody's coming to pray with you somebody's coming to pray with you come on come on raise your hand raise your hand somebody's coming to pray with you somebody's coming to, and the saints are rejoicing stand up on your feet and give god